in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Relationships and connections are transferable. Your networks, relationships, and connections. John 19, John 19, verse 26 and 27. John 19, very quickly, and then I wrap up. John 19, 26 and 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said, watch this. Watch Jesus transfer relationships. This is Jesus on the cross. And John is standing there. And the mother is standing there. And here's what John says. Woman, behold thy son. Verse 27. And he said to the disciple, John, today this is now your mother. The Bible says, and from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Now, um, in Nigeria, where I come from, the northern part of Nigeria, um, most of the people, especially the Muslim community, they understand this principle powerfully. They transfer relationships. Oh, this is my son. Just to let you know that this has been my friend for 35 years, and um, now he's going to be the new CEO. Could you have dinner with him? Just discuss with him. Just get to know him. You can transfer relationships. Relationships are a leverage. You may have heard me say it in my teachings that all blessings come from God through man to man. All blessings come from God through man to man. All troubles come from Satan through man to man. In any case, men are prophetic midwives. Listen, if God says yes, and a man says no, your yes remains in the realm of the spirit. It takes a man. Otherwise, Gabriel would not come and be negotiating with a young virgin that Jesus is supposed to arrive, but we are looking for the human vessel who will partner with heaven to make it happen. And Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. That's how Jesus arrived. It is the desire of God that all men be saved. But where are the men that will take that gospel to the lost? All blessings come from God through men to men. Relationships are powerful. You must invest strategically and structurally in relationships. And there's no time to teach on relationships here. I would have taught you that there are four kinds of people that if you do not have in your life, you are in trouble. Number one, divine connectors. Number two, men of influence. Number three, gifted men. Number four, burden bearers. So every time you pray that God connects you to men, these are the kinds of men you should pray for. Your relationships. Every father must transfer your relationships strategically so. Number four, what is the fourth thing that a father can transfer to your children your physical assets cash properties businesses can you see that what we have known to be inheritance is only number four and that's so in order of priority your convictions your name hallelujah your relationships and connections now your physical assets This was what the prodigal son received. Unfortunately, he went straight for number four. He ignored one, two, three. Watch the end of a young boy who only received money. The Bible says, let me quote very quickly, 
one time this gentleman gets up and meets his father and says, listen, I know so much about inheritance. I don't care whether you are dead or not. You are wasting my time being alive. Give me that which... And the father said, really, where did you get this orientation from? I will honor you. Take. I am a good man. I will leave you an inheritance. And the Bible says, as soon as he received it, there were foolish friends already waiting for him. Is it in your Bible? As soon as he received it, they escorted him away from the gates of sanity, away from the place of wisdom. The Bible says he spent what he had because he did not have the conviction of his father. He did not respect the name of his father. He did not even respect the relationships that brought the father that status. All that he went for was the money. And the Bible says depletion started immediately. He got to a point where he was now feeding with swine. Question, where were all the friends? Where were all the people who celebrated him? And he was with the swine. But I love something the Bible says. He said he came to himself. He never said the Holy Spirit spoke to him. He never said the devil threatened him. Men can come to themselves. And sometimes, sometimes, don't be in a hurry to help somebody God is leaving to come to himself. Because there are people, the best gift you can give them is to leave them for a while until they recognize the value. Now, I'm not, I hope you are not, I hope you know, I'm not saying do not help people. But sometimes in a hurry to take people out of certain situations, they continue to recycle an entitlement mentality that will not allow them to grow. So the prodigal son was there in his pain and in his silence. And he began to calculate a million dollars, $500,000. A hundred thousand dollars then a few friends left ten thousand dollars then a few more left one dollar now I'm in debt and I'm left with peaks he came to himself the Bible says in Proverbs 18 and verse 1 true desire a man haven't separated himself the Bible says he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom there is something about silence when you, a gentleman can remain and say, look, being in this debt year after year, I'm tired. There has to be a way out. And I'm telling you, you can get up from that place of determination and end certain cycles in your life. That's what happened to the prodigal son. He didn't have the power to change himself, but he had the power to decide to change. And here's what he said. How many hired servants has my father and I am here feeding with the swine. He said, you know what? I've lost everything. But I still know that I have a father. I will arise. Here is a young man speaking to himself. And I will go to my father. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you. We call that responsibility. I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. He says, take me as one of your servants. Now I cherish your convictions. I cherish your name. I know the power of being connected to you. I will not push you away for money again. I have, I've seen, I've seen the, the, the transcendent nature of money without a relationship. I'm willing to be a servant. It's not about the money. It's about you. Notice, the moment he took a step, the father too took a step. He never met the father at home. He met him somewhere in the middle of his responsibility steps. The father never met him in the rut. As soon as he said, I will go, the father left home and said, there's something about me. Even though my son is a stubborn son, he's still my son. Even though my son is, is, is that not what happened between us and Jesus, us and God? The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, God was already putting together a plan. However, that life that he brought is not imparted till like the prodigal son, you take that responsibility and take a step forward. And so the gentleman takes a step and watch this. As soon as he met the father, the father never discussed anything about his destruction. In other words, the responsibility you have gotten is enough. The message I would have told you, 
you already got it by coming to yourself the bible says he hugged him kissed him embraced him put back the signet ring and put a robe and brought him home and said listen we have to celebrate but there was another kind of son as i wrap up i hope you know that both of them did the same thing the only, the first person did it in his heart the other person executed it it is not the story of one responsible son versus one lawless one it is a story of two sons who were on their way to destruction one only had the courage to take the first step you will learn at the later part of the story because the Bible says when a celebration was going on the elder brother came and said what is going on here and they said remember that your brother he's back home and so we're throwing a celebration and he was offended the Bible says he went out and he left and a responsible father followed after him and said what is wrong he said I am here and I've served you all the days of my life and you've not even given me in other words I you've given me convictions you are giving me relationship but it's money I'm looking Looking for about to make the mistake of his younger brother this gentleman who left you and went to spend his life with harlots and all of that he returns back and you receive him and you're celebrating him and then I've been here and all you give me is an advice every day be a responsible person come let me lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus you are great is that all you are going to give me And the father said something verse 29 watch this we're wrapping up this is a message for someone next verse and he answering him said to his father lo this many years do I serve you neither transgress I at any time yet you never gave me a kid that I may make merry with my friends verse 30 it says but as soon as this your son which had devoured his living with harlots had and you have killed a fatted calf for him I like the father's reply watch this next verse please and he said unto him son you are ever with me here you do not know that our relationship is an inheritance this gentleman lost something precious he said all that I have question what is the all that means the money he gave the son was not all that he had he gave the son money and the son believed that he got everything from the father but he said there are other things this boy did not carry but you have to hmm. when Abraham Abraham had a total of about eight children Ishmael Isaac and others that came when it was time to bless his children your Bible says that he called the children of all the concubines and he gave them gifts but to Isaac he gave everything he had there was no mention of any physical thing given to Isaac after he gave the boys gift they went away and he said Isaac come kneel down let me give you everything I have there will be nothing in your pocket when I'm done but you would have gotten everything that blessing that came upon me that leads me to the fifth inheritance that every man must give his son the anointing and the mantle that made you you must be transferred to your children behind every great result there are graces there are anointings there are mantles please write it down you find this story in Genesis 25 from verse 1 to 11 will not read it for time hallelujah so he gave all the other children things and they were happy maybe fighting with one another mine and yours which is bigger and I'm, I, I can imagine Isaac standing and saying, so what where, where is mine no car no house what are you going to give me and he says come let me place something upon your life because you see the law is thou anointest my head with oil but he says my cup runneth over he does not anoint the cup he anoints your head that means your cup is a report card it tells us what is on your head if your cup is empty don't blame the job don't blame the business the business is only a physical expression thou anointest my head with oil as a result of that anointing in Genesis 26 
from verse 12. The Bible tells us that there was famine in a land. Is that in your Bible? Where every physical thing they had was going down. Isaac, having carried that blessing and that anointing, the Bible says he sowed in that land and received that same year and hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. 13, it says the man, Isaac, the man who had received that blessing from his father, he worked great, he went forward and he grew until he became very great. 14, for he had possessions, goodness. So what is on your head will eventually bring you the possessions of flocks, herds, a great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. We're reading to 16. It says, for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, go from us. He says, for thou art much mightier than we. What are the keys to receiving an inheritance from a father? There are two keys that the Bible gives. Number one is honor. Number two is service. You do not receive from a father just because you are his child. There must be a track record of honor. Honor. If I be a father, Malachi chapter 1 from verse 6 to 8, where is my honor? If you claim I am your father, where is my honor? Do you know, physically, you can receive the baton, but in the spirit, you are not the successor. It is the one who showed honor that truly carries the grace. Now, I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but have you seen many families where at the end, the person who really carries the man's mantle are not the biological children? They can carry physical things, but when you look, you will know that this house helped who has served for 15 years. Elisha was never, there is no prophecy about Elisha becoming a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. The prophet should come from among the sons of the prophet. But they got so familiar with that prophet, this is a man of God. But Elisha honored him and Elisha served. Two things. Let me charge every young man here as I wrap up. Never dishonor your father. Never dishonor your parents. No matter how right you are, you will pay for it. There are rules. When a father fights his son, he loses his honor. When a son fights his father, he loses his life. Hallelujah. That is the reason why God never fought Satan. You will never find God fighting Satan. It was Michael that went to fight Satan. Because if God fought Satan, even if he defeated him, Satan will still go to the earth as a victor to have made his father rise up to come and fight him. Fathers, don't fight sons. No. You delegate sons to deal with the matter. A father's honor is preserved when he does not fight his son. Sons, when you fight your father, that is what happened. Remember what happened between Noah? The Bible says Noah took wine and he slept and was naked. One of the sons came and saw him. He saw his father's nakedness. He rejoiced, called the other brothers and said, Can you imagine? Even though the man was drunk, he still knew who looked at him. When he got up from that state, he said, Who did this? He was not told. Your father may have backslidden, pray for his revival and restoration, but at no point should you dishonor him. There are certain things only fathers can carry, and there are certain things only age can bring. In their fallen state, they will look at you and bless you. I am a product of many, many blessings. Many, many blessings. You may have heard my story. One time, I went to buy something and I met two women and I decided to honor them. Two women, very unassuming women, and I decided to honor them. I said, please don't pay for it. Let me pay. It was not, it was not anything, not even up to, I, I'm not sure it was up to a dollar. And the women began to bless me. And one of the women looked at me and said, my son, forever walk upon gold. 
I'm wrapping up now. Years ago, I went to preach for those of us who are Nigerians in Afe Babalola University many years ago. And I went to preach there and I stopped and I was, I, I think I flew to one of the, the states and then to go by road getting there. And I passed a very small and strange village where people lived mysteriously long. I saw obituaries of 100 and something, 100 and something. I said, what in the world is this? What kind of grace is this? And when I was done ministering, on my way back to the airport, I said, stop. I saw a notice, 136 years. The man just died. I said, stop. Now, I'm not a Yoruba person, but I said, look for someone for us. Let me find the oldest man in this village. I want to sow into his life and have him speak over my life. Because I'm going to be traveling to the nations. No plane will kill me. No, no, whatever it is. But listen, just shouting amen alone is not the key. I understand the blessings that come from fathers. And when we got there, we found a man who could speak limited English. I'm wrapping up now. And then he took us to a man we entered the room and we met a man and then they interpreted i will speak and they will interpret these are young men who just came wanting to receive the blessing and the man laughed you see but those who carry this thing know they have it believe me you provoke it to honor and the man said kneel down and are you a man of god or kneel down i want to release it upon you and he began to pray and to bless me to rain those blessings i felt like a crown was being put on my head while he was speaking literally when he was done we sowed into his life we blessed him and when i was about to get into the car i saw some women standing and then they told me that the man that died one 36 year old man that was his wife standing i said let's go back i went back and i prostrated i greeted i said the man may be dead but you are one so he's still alive in you can you pray for me now watch this i'm wrapping up this woman laughs and says, follow me. And then I enter a room with her and she begins to show me old photos. This was the wife of his youth. Old, and you know those days they married very early. The wife of his youth. What happened that God preserved them? What kind of grace did they carry? When they were done, I said, please, for God's sake, would you release what was upon you and your husband on me? And the woman took off her shoes. She said, kneel down. She stood on her bare foot and she said, kneel down. For about 15 minutes, this woman from the heart of a mother, I honestly did not care what she was saying. All I was concerned about was the fact that it was a heart-to-heart -heart connection. I'm going to make one request as we wrap up. I'm going to ask at the end of this respectfully so, Pastor Gandhi, representing the fathers here to speak over this congregation. I know he has been your pastor for many years. I'm not asking the pastor to speak. You've heard the pastor for many years. I'm asking the father to speak. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. You can receive a prophet in the name of your brother. You will receive discussions and news about the family situation you can receive in the name of whatever it is have you learned something i went for a meeting and in that meeting a man gave a story that changed my life very great man a church like this and they were Telling us the story. Things were going bad in his house. Yet the church was excelling. The church was doing well. Whereas his family was not doing well. One time. Just like our mother here. A sermon is going on. And you can imagine. She just got up. And walked out of the church. Literally. She walked out of the church. And the pastor was touched. Confused. What is going on now? He was done preaching, finished counseling, and rushed home. And he said, my wife, what is wrong? Did I offend you? Did I say something? Not a word. He sat down at the table to eat. 
and then here's this woman serving her husband of many years and he noticed the tray that she brought was different you know that tray that women keep for special occasions she brought it out and he said please my food we've been married for years let's leave these children if you bring I'm hungry not a word from her set the table with honor with respect with regard and then she brought the last item on the table and she got down on her knees and she said God's servant my family is in trouble the man looked at his wife and said he felt that same anointing that he would feel when he was in church since I've been relating with you just as a wife it is not the wife, the husband dimension I'm looking for that father that grace that produces the testimonies that we only hear in church and cannot come to my life now I'm taking responsibility this is not your wife this is one who has submitted to your grace and he said he laid his hands on his wife and began to prophesy that everything that has plagued her home which is also his home and miracles began to happen I will stop here Abba Father Hallelujah. Is it all right if I make an altar call? Thank you. Hallelujah. What is an altar call? It's not a call to come forward. No. It is not a call to recite a poem that is referenced from scripture. An altar call is a declaration of your inability to help yourself. It is proof of humility. It's an acknowledgement of the governing authority of Jesus. In this place right now, I believe there are men and women. Some of you may have come for this conference. Some of you following by way of television and internet. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. The greatest of all fathers is called the Father of Spirits. Is desiring a relationship. And for many, you may be like the prodigal son. You're saying, Apostles, good listening to you. But now, whilst hearing you speak, the Holy Ghost began to convict me that this faith life is not just about burdensome rituals. God desires a functional relationship between a father and a son, a father and his child. And this may be your moment to truly make it right with Jesus. Or perhaps there's someone here um, you are like the prodigal son. The story started with you in the house. But for some reason you veered off and now you are in a state that does not glorify God. And you are saying, Apostle, if you would give me one chance, I would like to make this right with Jesus. Wherever you are, without any sense of shame and fear, may I request with the determination of the prodigal son, please stand up on your feet. I want to pray with you. Thank you. God bless you. Stand. Let's celebrate them as they stand. Stand. Don't be ashamed. Stand. Wherever you are. This is unto Jesus. You're making it right with your maker. You're making it right with Abba. Hallelujah. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua now for all of you who are standing i salute your courage Thank you for making this bold decision for Jesus. I'm going to lead you to pray a prayer, and that includes those who are watching by way of television 
or perhaps you are even watching a rebroadcast of this program it is never too late to make it right with Jesus for all who are standing please say after me loud and clear say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the Son of God I believe that you died for my sin right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today I am a child of God amen let me pray for you father thank you for these precious ones your word declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away in the name of Jesus by the authority of scripture I declare their sins forgiven and I call them bona fide recipients of the life of God in the name of Jesus we declare that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and that from hence you go from glory to glory and grace to grace for in Jesus much less name we have prayed okay so here's what I want you to do for me all of you please keep standing please keep standing just for a moment all of you who made this decision there are counselors who are handing a card are they leaving now okay so let me request for one moment please pick your bags your Bibles whatever you came to church with and may I please request that you just follow the counselors they will have a word with you or perhaps can we allow so that once we're done speaking they can go will that be fine at my request okay so that um, because I want us to pray now for one minute my apologies if I've stretched your time I just want you to receive something that you will return back with a testimony hallelujah is it alright if we rise and pray for one minute please stand up on your feet one prayer point and we'll speak and I'll respectfully invite the man of God to come and make declarations from the bowels of his spirit to rest upon your life and reprogram new possibilities let me request that you get this teaching parents give your children young people listen to it and ensure that everyone gets a hold of this teaching it may be deliverance to someone hallelujah one prayer point father my heart is open to receive of your fatherhood go ahead and pray you are the father Abba, you do not fail. You are a giver. You are a protector. You are a defender. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Let your fatherhood speak in my life. If someone pray, let your fatherhood speak. Let your fatherhood speak. Let your fatherhood speak. In the name of Jesus, let your fatherhood speak over my finances over that situation that takes away my joy and my peace someone call on to Abba Jesus said when we pray you pray first our father he's given us his spirit whereby we cry Abba father someone call his name father come to my rescue father open doors for me in the name of Jesus let the two lip gates of the United States be open for me father come through for me concerning this financial situation concerning this marital situation concerning this situation as regards my children my job go ahead and pray if you been evil know how to give good gifts how much more Hallelujah. While you are praying, may I respectfully invite Pastor Gandhi to just come and speak the blessing upon your life. Please keep praying, everybody. Let this atmosphere be charged as you pray in the spirit. You are about to receive the blessing of a father. You are about to receive the blessing of a father. Is someone praying? which I receive even from you, Heavenly Father, I speak even to this congregation. And Lord, I pronounce your blessings upon them. 
we declare upon every father that is here, Heavenly Father, the ability to be a protector, ability to be a provider. Lord, we say that the ability to be a source, even to their family, we release it, Heavenly Father, upon them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we speak to every woman that is here, Heavenly Father, to those who are married, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I release the blessing of being a home builder, even upon their lives, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For everyone who is married here, Lord, we, receive, we release the blessing of fruitfulness, even for them who are believing in you for a child, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we release the blessings of the Lord, even today, upon every single lady who desires to be married. The ability, the ability to be found, Heavenly Father, Lord, let that grace rest upon them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the young men who believe that they need, they want to get married, will release the ability for them to find that which is theirs, Heavenly Father, and that will give them joy in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, we pray concerning those who are students who are in this place. We release upon them the ability to understand that which they are being taught, even upon them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ability to have retentive memory. Let it rest mightily upon them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, we declare upon everyone who is here, Lord, who is not yet saved, who has heard this message, we pray, Heavenly Father, that your spirit will continue to nudge them, Heavenly Father. And Lord, they will never leave this world without finding. And Lord, not only finding you, but receiving you as their Lord and their Savior. Upon this congregation, you know that which they have said unto you. Lord, we pronounce that the blessings of God will rest upon them. Wherever they go, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we declare upon this congregation, my Father and my God, that they will find a, love, a life of fulfillment, a life of joy, a life of peace, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That wherever they go, Heavenly Father, they will be fruitful in all that they do, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please let's stretch our hands forward, my Father, my God, as they have stretched their hand forward, Lord, give unto them that which is their desire, that is according to your will. Lord, they stretch out their hands in faith, my Father, my God, they will receive even from you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So your name alone be all of God, because you are the Father of Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word today. Let this word find a place in our lives in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we declare God's grace upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. In the same vein, can I speak over your life? I decree and declare, standing upon the grace of the fathers in this place and the grace of our Father and the Lord that did you in the name of Jesus. I speak over everyone here that every door that has remained closed over your life that should be opened. Right now we declare that door open now. Every shame and every reproach that has come upon anyone and any family, I stand by the God of Jeshuron, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind. In the name of Jesus, let reproach be turned to honor. We pray for every prodigal son and every daughter. If there's anyone here having trouble with your children, it looks like they're not yet what you are trusting God for them to become. In the name of Jesus, let their deliverance begin now. No one here will die before their time. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy Psalm 112 to every family here. The Bible says, Blessed is the one that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. It said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. It says, The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and yet his righteousness endures forever. May this word become true in your life. I speak over your job, go and prosper. I speak over your businesses, go and prosper. 
I declare that the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places and you have a goodly heritage. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed and you remain blessed forever. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. I also have the honor, I'm told, to collect the offerings and the tithes. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I want to encourage everyone, please package, please be seated. God bless you. Can we package our offerings and our tithes as I speak over them so that um, we would receive them? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9 says, Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. When you begin to read from verse 6, it says, This I say, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully he shall also reap bountifully. The next verse says, Every man as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Verse 8 is where I'm going to. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Verse 8, that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. Now, please package your offerings, your tithe. Is it all right if I ask those who are paying their tithe to stand? So I speak over their lives. You're paying your tithe, please stand. Stand believing. The Bible says that um, the Lord blessed Melchizedek, blessed Abraham, and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth, and he gave him a tithe of all. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I speak the blessing upon your tithe. Your tithe is proof of your obedience. Therefore, I decree and declare that the remaining that you have is sanctified in the name of Jesus. We command it to prosper. We command increase. We command multiplication in the name of Jesus. No one tither here goes down. The devourer is rebuked for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. You will be called Beulah and Hephzibah in the name of Jesus Christ. And for every giver, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that your seeds are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. We give your seeds, the various seeds, a voice in the realm of the Spirit. We declare that it will speak for you. You are blessed, you give rejoicing, and you also receive rejoicing. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and Nakata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.